Hey, order! Oh, order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, the worst news for patients in the history of the NHS. That's how one campaign group described today's decision by junior doctors in England to go on strike. The first walkout will be on December the 1st after 98% backed industrial action on a respectable 76% turnout. The saga over their contracts has been rumbling on for three years, with the government presenting the changes as a push to give us a seven-day NHS in England and doctors groups claiming new working hours will put patients at risk. Here's Chris Cook. The doctors union, the BMA, has been locked in an argument with the government about changes to how junior doctors get paid and their working hours. We've shown you some of their stories. Without an agreement, the government said it would impose changes on doctors. So the BMA balloted to strike. It's the 6th of November and I've received my ballot from the, the BMA. Today we got the uh, results. Junior doctors voted overwhelmingly for industrial action. Three days in December are in the diary when senior doctors will have to cover for their juniors. One day of emergency care only and two full walkouts. A full strike and I'm going to answer yes, yes to both of those questions. The BMA says it wants to restart talks, but only if they're arbitrated by ACAS, the arbitration service. The health secretary also says he wants talks, but unarbitrated ones first. My door has been open for talks since June and the BMA have refused to engage at any stage with talks. We've had a, a very thorough independent process. We now need to discuss the outcome of that process. I don't rule out the involvement of third parties in the future, but for now, the right thing to do is to call off the strike, come and talk to the government about how we can work together to improve weekend care for patients. Whatever Jerry Mahan is saying, it's really simple maths. This can't be safe. You can't guarantee you're not going to work more hours if you're not going to give us more doctors, you're just going to make it cheaper for us to cover more antisocial hours. If there are December strikes, it's not clear how public opinion will move. The NHS is already struggling. The English NHS aims to have fewer than 5% of A&D patients dealt with in more than four hours. Now here's September's figures for last year, when we didn't quite make that target. And this year, when we missed it by a bit more. Now that's an ill portent for this winter. That means we're in worse shape than last year. And last December, more than 10% of admissions broke the four hour rule. So these strikes aren't ideally timed. The timing of this strike couldn't possibly be worse. We're heading into winter. The winter pressures on the health service are always considerable. That's inevitable. And I fear very much indeed that people will suffer as a result of these proposed actions. So there's public sympathy for doctors, but there's a risk in striking. If the NHS struggles and patients suffer over Christmas, the doctors could be blamed for it by the public. A strike is a powerful weapon, but it's not one without risks. Dr Johan Malawana is the chair of the Junior Doctors Committee at the British Medical Association, which is organising the industrial action. He joins me now. Now, you have timed this, haven't you, for absolute maximum disruption when people are most likely to need the NHS. That's not true, Katie. What we've, we've been pushed into this action because of the, uh, the effects of the government. The government came out in July and they try, they've said they're going to impose a contract in August. We are dictated the timetable by Jeremy Hunt and this government. But you're having the strike in December? We have followed the legislation part, uh, that set out and we're simply going through that as we've been asked. The, the fact is no junior doctor wants to ever go out on strike. The government but has pushed us. The government has pushed us into this course of action. Even today with a mandate of 98% we have said to the government please let's have proper conciliation talks. But the government refuses. But I'm confused by this because surely, I mean as I understand it, uh, in July this document came out by an independent body you haven't negotiated on it at all. You haven't actually spoken to the government since then. So why do you need to go to another third party? You may as well just start the negotiations. Why do you need to go on strike? The fact is that the negotiations that are being offered are not serious negotiations. They have always... Why not? 
Well, that's a question for the government. The government has been government clear. The government they are, of course. Yeah, well, the government says that, and yet junior doctors themselves have read the documents that Jeremy Hunt has put out. These are intelligent professionals, and yet, you know, 98% of them have come out and said that the government's position is not actually the, is not correct. And so what would serious negotiations look like to you, then? What we want to do is we want a serious negotiation that basically takes away the threat of imposition, that, a gun to, that is held to the head of junior doctors, and we have a discussion about the safe working practices of junior doctors. That's the key to all of this, is safety of junior doctors in their working practices, because if doctors work safely, they will be less tired and they, won't have, they can have less effect on, on negative effects on patients. But as a result, you're putting patient safety at risk. I mean, on the 8th of December, when it's a full strike and there'll be no junior doctors, say, in A&E, what's the worst thing, do you think, that can happen? The fact is there are doctors throughout the NHS who are going to be working. There are consultants, there are SAS doctors. There will be no junior doctors? The, but there will be a, a lot of other NHS staff, NHS, uh, nurses, consultants and SAS doctors, and they, we have all committed to making sure that we are going to provide the safest NHS we can in this. We safest given, as we can? I mean, what's the impact going to be, do you think? We've given the NHS three weeks of notice, three, two weeks more than we actually need to, because we're very clear that we want the NHS to prepare for this. We want, actually, the, uh, the government to stop going down this pathway, stop pushing us into this industrial action. That's what we Can really want. Can you guarantee that nobody will die? We're really hoping that Jeremy Hunt... Hoping? We hope that Jeremy Hunt basically takes away the threat of imposition and actually comes and talks to us seriously about a safe contract for junior doctors but and for patients. But that's not an answer. I mean, can you guarantee that nobody will die in on December medicine, the 8th? In medicine... There, unfortunately, there are no guarantees. The fact there is, are more guarantees if the, all the doctors are there. Well, what we've said all along is that we want safe, fair contracts because sa the safety of patients in the long term is affected if Jeremy Hunt imposes this contract. What would you say to our uh, viewers who have routine operations planned for those days? Those operations will be cancelled, presumably. They'll be in pain for weeks, quite likely. What, what's your message to them? The fact is that no doctor wants to have the, to cause the disruption that we're seeing. And we, what we're asking the public is to support their junior doctors and talk to the government. Try and f t tell this government that actually imposing an unsafe contract on junior doctors is ultimately going to have a massive impact on both patients and the NHS. We need to actually say to the government this is unfair and this is wrong. I mean, how much free time do you think it is reasonable for a junior doctor to have? I mean, you've been criticised as having for having enough time to run a separate business, a wedding photography business. I think I'm not going to dignify that with an answer because the fact is that, you know, we, I'm I mean, here if you to run talk a different about, business on the side... I, I'm here to talk about junior doctors and the fact, is that, the fact is that junior doctors are absolutely a vital uh, component of the NHS and what we want to provide... Nobody's doubting that, absolutely not. And what we want to provide is a safe service for our patients. And if, if we cannot actually have a safe contract that protects our hours and stops us working in an in a unsafe way, that is ultimately going to be really unfair on doctors and their patients. But part of this argument is about the free time that you need. And if you, as a junior doctor, are able to run a separate business, then... People out there might think, that's a little strange. Well, what I did while, while I was doing research on my sp in my spare time is, is a different matter. But so you no longer is, do it? I, well, the fact is that what we're here to talk about is the safety of junior doctors, and I think that actually, and patients, and I think actually that line of questioning suggests that we're not focusing on the issue that's absolutely at the heart of this. Doctors so you do still run a wedding photography business? Um, uh, the fact is that uh, yes not, or no. I, sp I spend all my time actually doing these interviews on Fred. So, so you're not running it. Uh, no. So the the point no, is not. that the point is that yes what no. we need to talk about is junior doctors and the safe hours that we're working. I, I I'm absolutely adamant that what we need to try and do is enter serious talks through the conciliation service with ACAS. We've offered that to the government, and yet the government refuses to engage in that. Johanna Lawana, thanks very much for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. I've been getting away with it.